A recent poll shows that 64% of potential American voters support the U.S. government officially recognizing Taiwan as an independent country separate from China. Yes, you heard it right, 64%. I mean, just look at that, our Democrats, Republicans, and independent voters have reached a consensus, which is even harder than finding Bigfoot. Wait, is Bigfoot real? I forgot to ask those 14% who oppose if they believe in Bigfoot. Now, let me address the 22% who are undecided. Your attitude reminds me of ordering at a restaurant. When the waiter comes, I say, I want a burger, no wait, I want a pizza, no no, maybe sushi. Oh, I forgot, I'm actually not sure. I completely understand your dilemma. Sometimes choices are really hard, especially when you have to pick between two options instead of having all the food you want from a menu. And the timing of this data release is just a few days after our Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, made a statement saying, we do not support Taiwan's independence. Well, I know, I know, this contradiction is like telling your friend, I don't support you losing weight, but I absolutely support you fitting into those smaller sized jeans. We all know those jeans won't budge, Mr. Blinken. And then this chaotic situation becomes even more interesting. Our president, Joe Biden, has stated in 2021 and 2022 that if China invades Taiwan, the United States will defend Taiwan, which goes against the long-standing, strategic ambiguity, policy of the U.S. Then the White House retracted this statement. It's like making a bet with your friend, saying, if it rains tomorrow, I'll give you $5, and then the next morning you wake up to pouring rain outside, and you say, oh, I meant if it's sunny tomorrow, I'll give you $5. This is a classic example of what we call a policy flip-flop, my friends. So, if you're China, I imagine you might be thinking, oh no, the Americans are causing trouble again. But don't worry, we Americans are always the good guys. Along with recognizing Taiwan's independence, we'll also introduce you to our good friend, Bigfoot. Recently, our slip of the tongue expert, President, Joe Biden, has been putting on a spectacular show of linguistic figure skating that has amazed and amused audiences worldwide. Yes, our dear old Joe, you never know which country he'll astonish with his next statement, or should I say, which two countries. First, he referred to India as China on Tuesday, and I imagine India's Prime Minister Modi must have been infuriated. After all the hard work to boost India's economy, Biden's words just sent them back to China. This could be considered a unique version of the Belt and Road initiative. If I were President Xi of China, I might say, how could I accidentally take over such a large country overnight? But Biden didn't stop there. Oh no, his language extravaganza has only just begun. On Wednesday, while talking about Putin, he actually referred to Ukraine as Iraq. I can only say that Biden might be playing a brand new geography game, which I call, Biden's Geography Carousel. He spins the globe, points at Iraq, and says, oh, it looks like Putin is here today. The people of Ukraine must have been shocked, thinking they got a free plane ticket to the Middle East. Of course, such slip-ups also prompted a response from the Kremlin. I guess they must be laughing their heads off at Biden because they finally found a reason to go head-to-head -head with him. Putin might be thinking, I'm lucky to have a friend like Biden, he has made a huge contribution to my collection of jokes. So, I warmly welcome everyone to prepare maps and smiles for the next time you hear Biden speak and join our game of Biden's Geography Carousel. We'll see you next time, and who knows, by then, maybe France will have turned into Australia. Let's talk about the Chinese spy balloon incident earlier this year. According to the Wall Street Journal, U.S. officials cited preliminary findings from a thorough investigation that revealed a Chinese spy balloon flying over U.S. airspace earlier this year, using American technology equipment to collect intelligence information. U.S. officials have stated that analysis has revealed that the downed Chinese balloon was filled with American equipment, some of which is available for sale online, along with more specialized Chinese sensors and other devices used to collect photos, videos, and other information to transmit back to China. They assert that these findings support the conclusion that the aircraft was engaged in espionage activities, rather than the weather monitoring claimed by Beijing. However, it appears that this particular balloon failed to transmit the data it collected while flying over Canada and the US back to China. Nine bipartisan members of the U.S. House Armed Services Committee, including Chairman Mike Rogers, arrived in Taiwan on the 27th and met with Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen on the afternoon of the 28th. This visit comes at a sensitive moment in U.S.-China relations, and Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs has stated that it is the largest-scale visit by U.S. lawmakers in recent years. 
President Tsai Ing-wen expressed gratitude for the long-standing U.S. commitment to Taiwan's security and emphasized the continuous cooperation between Taiwan and the U.S. in areas such as the economy and defense to safeguard peace and stability in the Indo-Pacific region. Rogers also stated that U.S. support for Taiwan has always been bipartisan and unwavering. Former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley delivered a speech at the American Enterprise Institute AEI, think tank in Washington, D.C., on the 27th. Haley announced earlier this year that she would be running for the Republican Party's presidential nomination. Reuters noted that her remarks were among the strongest statements on China taken by potential Republican candidates. Haley advocates that if China does not stop the flow of fentanyl into the United States, the U.S. should cancel normal trade relations with China. Additionally, she calls for U.S. companies to move out of China, stating that if the United States stands united, the Chinese Communist Party will become a historical relic. Chinese embassy spokesperson Liu Pengyu criticized Haley's remarks on the 28th as irresponsible, stating that only those who rely on smearing and shifting blame to gain attention during election campaigns will become historical relics. We have seen China engaging in increasingly coercive behavior in the South China Sea, including attempting to exercise its expansionist and illegal maritime claims, said Daniel Kreitenbrink, the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for East Asian and Pacific Affairs, at a South China Sea conference hosted by the Center for Strategic and International Studies on Wednesday. Kreitenbrink emphasized that the U.S. policy is to support countries in exercising sovereignty and pursuing national interests, and that both large and small countries should abide by the same rules, with larger countries not bullying smaller ones. According to the Wall Street Journal on Thursday, Sources revealed that the U.S. Department of Commerce may take action as early as next month to ban NVIDIA and other chip manufacturers from exporting chips to China and other key countries without a license. In September of last year, NVIDIA stated that the U.S. government had requested it to stop exporting two advanced chips for artificial intelligence to China. The Biden administration announced a series of new export restrictions in October, including in the semiconductor sector. NVIDIA later created a special version of chips for export to China. On the 28th, China passed the foreign relations law, which stipulates that China has the right to counteract sanctions and interference by foreign countries. Wang Yi, director of the Office of the Central Commission for Foreign Affairs of the Communist Party of China, stated that China will continuously improve its legal toolbox for external struggles, and this law provides legal protection for China's diplomacy as a major country with Chinese characteristics. However, experts have pointed out that this law may make the situation for foreign companies in China even more difficult. China will implement the revised anti-espionage law starting from July 1, expanding the definition of espionage-related activities. Patrick, deputy spokesperson of the U.S. State Department, stated on June 28 during a regular press briefing that the U.S. is closely monitoring the impact of the law after its implementation. The Taiwanese Ministry of National Defense stated on the 27th that around 11 p.m. on that day, two Russian escort ships were detected in the waters off the eastern coast of Taiwan, sailing from south to north and leaving the Taiwan Strait from the northeast port of Suao towards the southeast direction. In response, the Taiwanese military deployed aircraft, ships, and land-based missile systems to monitor their movements throughout the process. According to civilian monitoring, the warships were only 26 nautical miles away from Taiwan's territorial waters. Some analysts believe that the Russian warships were returning from military exercises, which had strong political implications for Japan, but it also highlighted the interconnectedness of Taiwan and Japan's national security. Concerned about China's expanding influence, the Australian Minister of Defense visited the Solomon Islands. Taiwanese Foreign Minister Joseph Wu called on Canberra to send a military attaché to Taipei to jointly prevent the worst-case scenario from happening as Beijing continues to issue war threats. He also stated that the Taiwanese government hopes to send a military attaché to Canberra. Wu Jiaoxie also stated that this issue needs careful discussion between Taiwan and Australia, and Taiwan respects the decision of the Australian government. Taiwan's foreign minister, Joseph Wu, stated in an interview with Philippine media that Taiwan is considering bringing in more Filipino workers, potentially allowing them to stay in Taiwan for a longer period and apply for permanent residency. The latest opinion poll by the Taiwan Public Opinion Foundation shows that Taiwan's vice president and Democratic Progressive Party presidential candidate, Lai ching tae is the most favored presidential candidate by the United States. To counter China's growing diplomatic influence, Japan plans to expand its diplomatic personnel in the Indo-Pacific region. According to Japanese media, the goal is to increase the total number of diplomatic personnel by at least 8,000 by 2030. After the German Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution's annual report for 2022 identified China as the biggest threat in the economic and scientific espionage fields, 
the Federal Minister of Education called on universities to reassess their cooperation with Confucius Institutes and set clear boundaries. Currently, there are still 19 Confucius Institutes operating in Germany, but several universities, such as the University of Hamburg, Goethe University Frankfurt, University of Dusseldorf, and University of Trier, have ended their cooperation with Confucius Institutes in recent years. The Czech security strategy identifies Russia as a direct threat and considers China as a systemic competitor. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the Belt and Road Initiative, and as China actively seeks new members to join, Italy, the only G7 country participating in the initiative, has repeatedly expressed consideration of withdrawing from the plan. The Chinese Communist Party sent Minister of the International Department of the Central Committee, Liu Jianchao, to visit Italy in an attempt to win over the Italian civil society and business community. A survey found that the Chinese public support for Russia's position in the conflict is minimally influenced by age and income, with highly educated individuals even leaning more towards supporting Russia. The most critical factors are gender and information sources. Women and those who obtain information from foreign media tend to be more inclined to oppose the war, while those who receive information from official media and social media are more strongly supportive of Russia. In 2022, the Russia-Ukraine conflict erupted. Based on the long-standing friendly relationship between China and Russia and the adoration of Putin among the Chinese public, many sympathize with Russia, which is facing joint sanctions from the West. A former senior CIA official stated that for Xi Jinping and China, the internal turmoil and instability in Russia, which may arise from the successful Western-supported Ukrainian military counteroffensive and sanctions, could lead to further isolation. He said that for China, a pragmatic choice would be to ease tensions with the United States and Europe, but it has been shown that Xi Jinping is more focused on ideology than his predecessors. China does not oppose returning Crimea to Ukraine. On the 27th, Chinese ambassador to the EU, Fu Kong, was asked by reporters if he supported Kyiv's efforts to regain the territories occupied by Russia. He said he saw no reason to oppose Ukraine regaining all the territories it obtained when it declared independence in 1991, including the Crimea Peninsula that was annexed by Russia in 2014. Fu Kong later added that these are historical issues that must be resolved through negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. Since the end of last month, Xi Jinping has twice called for domestic preparations for what he refers to as extreme scenarios or situations. Amid intensifying competition between the US and China, his repeated use of this term suggests the possibility of an escalation in tensions. Xi Jinping's latest remarks reflect the Chinese government's belief that the challenges from Washington have increased, particularly regarding what they consider the sacred mission of ultimately reunifying Taiwan. Since the start of the Ukraine conflict, Saudi Arabia's share in the global largest energy market, China, has steadily declined due to Russia's significant discounts on oil sales. In India, the reversal is even more pronounced, with Saudi Arabia currently holding a 13% share in the Indian oil market compared to 20% before the Ukraine conflict. According to data from Kepler, Russia now accounts for approximately 40% of India's crude oil imports, compared to 3% before the conflict. As Western countries continue to raise flags of risk reduction in dealing with China, the visit of New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern and her delegation to China sends a signal that the Western world is not a monolithic bloc. Faced with a stagnant economic momentum, New Zealand is once again turning its gaze towards China. However, as geopolitical tensions in the Indo-Pacific region intensify, the domestic demand to reduce reliance on Beijing is also growing in New Zealand. Can both sides overcome these obstacles? After the Asian financial crisis in 1997 and 1998, Thailand and other Southeast Asian countries managed to overcome their economic difficulties through exports. Ireland and Spain similarly employed this strategy after the global banking collapse in 2008 and 2009. In the following years, Greece did the same after the outbreak of the European financial crisis. Now, Beijing is also weighing whether to use exports to stabilize its economy. Visa has become the biggest challenge for Chinese people traveling abroad this summer. Taking Germany, a European country, as an example, the earliest available appointment for visa application is already in October or even November, which means missing the summer vacation and the Chinese National Day holiday. If one starts to make a visa appointment now, they may only be able to travel during Christmas. Hong Kong directors have stated that actors in film companies are filled with fear. After the implementation of the Hong Kong National Security Law and the introduction of new regulations for film censorship, some Hong Kong directors have expressed difficulties in fundraising and hiring actors. The director of the documentary, Revolution of Our Times, Chao Quan Wai, revealed that his new film faced withdrawal of investment from the funding party and the lead actor resigned. 
He stated, actors under Hong Kong film companies are filled with fear, and everything is shrouded in it. During the process of working on this manuscript, the interviewees in the article were concerned about the negative impact on their current team due to public opinion. They even wanted to delete all their content. The platform where the article was supposed to be published had to give up due to being summoned, and several well-known media outlets couldn't publish it due to the risks that we all know but cannot talk about. This is truly a very Chinese situation. Several Chinese and Hong Kong artists held an exhibition in London with the theme of artworks that are banned by Beijing, displaying political art pieces that are currently difficult to exhibit in China and Hong Kong. One of the participating artists is Chinese-Australian artist Badia Sao. His past exhibitions have been repeatedly obstructed by the Chinese Communist Party, but he says that this kind of threat has to some extent become material for his creations. He states that artists pursue freedom, while the Chinese Communist Party sees artists who dare to express themselves freely as a threat. Badiasau says, perhaps more Hong Kong people, especially the young, will choose to leave their homeland, but that doesn't mean the downfall of Hong Kong. Because I always believe that one's homeland follows them. Even though so many Hong Kong people are in a state of exile, when they arrive, it's like bringing the spirit, culture, and self-identity of Hong Kong with them. Renowned Chinese-American writer Yan Jie Ling, who was blacklisted by the Chinese government last year for criticizing their mishandling of the COVID-19 pandemic and calling attention to the Iron Chain Girl incident, published her latest Chinese novel, Malati, through her own publishing institution based in Berlin, Germany, in June. Indian stock market hits a new high as investors bet on corporate growth. India's main stock index, Sensex, rose to 63,915.42 points on June 28. Expectations of sustained corporate performance growth, driven by India's increasing population and income, have attracted capital inflows. The demand for diversified investments, considering geopolitical risks such as China, has also contributed to the rise in stock prices. Hong Kong's export decline exceeds expectations as global demand weakens, putting pressure on economic prospects. Hong Kong's exports continue to decline for the 13th consecutive month in May, posing challenges to its economic outlook due to weak global commodity demand. The Hong Kong Census and Statistics Department reported that the value of overall goods exports in May decreased by 15.6% compared to the same period last year, while the value of goods imports decreased by 16.7%. The trade deficit for that month amounted to 26.4 billion Hong Kong dollars. The Chinese National Audit Office revealed that local Chinese governments artificially inflated their income by $12 billion through a series of fictitious land and other state-owned asset transactions. This means that the financial situation of Chinese local governments last year was even worse than most economists had imagined. The revenue from land use rights transfer for Chinese local governments decreased by 23% year-on-year, and this figure already includes the fictitious land sales transactions worth $12 billion. So far this year, related revenue has further declined by 20%. China's job market is weak, and age discrimination is widespread, which is not illegal in China. This is a double blow for workers in their 30s who are making decisions about their careers, marriage, and childbirth, among other major issues. Open Black Lens Bracket Xi Jinping's works dominate the top five best-selling books in China in May and June Close Black Lens Bracket The sales of Xi Jinping's works and other political books such as the Communist Party Constitution have dominated the top five best-selling books in China in May and June. Among the top 20 bestsellers, seven are Xi Jinping's works and speeches. Myanmar crime syndicates from China are now targeting global victims Close Black Lens Bracket according to a new report from the United States Institute of Peace a research institute established by the U.S. Congress, crime syndicates from China operating on the Thai-Myanmar border are engaging in online financial fraud targeting victims worldwide. Citizens from over 46 countries have fallen victim to their activities, while government enforcement efforts have had little effect. The report states that only coordinated multinational efforts can stop the spread of crime in Myanmar. Hello everyone, I'm your news anchor Yali, providing you with a one-stop service for China-related news every day. Feel free to leave comments in the comment section, and we will read them carefully and respond to you. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode, take care everyone. This means that the financial problems of Chinese local governments last year were even worse than most economists had imagined. Land use rights transfer revenue for Chinese local governments decreased by 23% year on year, and this figure already includes fictitious land sales transactions worth $12 billion. So far this year, related revenue has further declined by 20%. China's job market is weak, and age discrimination is widespread, which is not illegal in China. 
This is a double blow for workers in their 30s who are making decisions about their careers, marriage, childbirth, and other major issues. Open Black Lens Bracket Xi Jinping's works dominate the top five best-selling books in China in May and June Close Black Lens Bracket The sales of Xi Jinping's works and other political books such as the Communist Party Constitution have dominated the top five best-selling books in China in May and June. Among the top 20 bestsellers, seven are Xi Jinping's works and speeches. Crime syndicates from China operating in the Thai Myanmar border are now targeting global victims close black lens bracket according to a new report from the United States Institute of Peace, established by the U.S. Congress, crime syndicates from China operating on the Thai Myanmar border are engaging in online financial fraud targeting victims worldwide. Citizens from over 46 countries have fallen victim to their activities, while government enforcement efforts have had little effect. The report states that only coordinated multinational efforts can stop the spread of crime in Myanmar. Hello everyone, I'm your news anchor Yali, providing you with a one-stop service for China-related news every day. Feel free to leave comments in the comment section, and we will read them carefully and respond to you. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode, take care everyone.